Hi there, my name is Corey Gaddy, Technical Solutions Consultant for TPM. This video will cover creating super elevated assemblies and corridors in Civil 3D. We've had a few of our clients inquire about creating super elevated roads in Civil 3D. The process is actually a lot simpler than one may believe. Okay, so let's get into the software. Okay, I'm in the most recent version of the software, Civil 3D 2021. So we'll go ahead and make ourselves a new assembly. All right, call it what we want. Okay, basically assembly style, everything else is good. We're gonna drop this assembly in somewhere. Okay, and then we'll actually need to start building on this assembly. Okay, so first thing we can do is bring us a lane in. So I'm over here under lanes. We're gonna to go to lane, super elevation. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and drop that in on our assembly. All right, so we have one side of the lane there. Okay, and then what we'll do now is we can go ahead and add the other side of the lane. And so we'll need to do that is to look at our properties menu. Okay, right now we sh should be on the right side of the assembly. So then we'll change this to the left side. Okay, and we'll drop in the other side of the assembly. All right, we can adjust our parameters as we go. So if we want to change our slope line width, we could do that at this point. Okay. So then we'll go ahead and add in our shoulder. So we need to go ahead and click on the shoulders tab. Okay. And then we'll click on which shoulder we want. Okay. So we'll just do us a little standard shoulder here. All right. Once we click on that, you'll see our properties menu sort of guides us over to the shoulder section. And so we can adjust our width of our shoulder. I'm not sure what your standard shoulder would be. Uh, maybe make this a five foot whatever the standard is all right and as long as it reads right there then we can go ahead now and pick on the section of the assembly that we want to add our shoulder into so we have to select one of these circles okay and that brings in our shoulder you see it kind of slopes down there and then to do the other side we could change this over to the left okay and bounce over to the other side of the assembly and do the left shoulder all right. And now we have both of our shoulders into the assembly. So then the last thing we we'll want to do is add in our daylight. So we can get back to existing. So I'll go to my daylight tab. And then I'm going to use daylight standard. Okay, to add in. And then I'll go over to the section of the shoulder that I want to use. Okay, right now we're still on the left. Because the last shoulder that we used was on the left. So I'll go ahead and just use that side. All right, and then we can set our parameters for that daylight as well. So if we want our slopes, you know, our cut slope and fill slope, we can adjust those. Okay, we could adjust those ahead of time or we could do them after the fact. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my right shoulder. And since we talked about adjusting our slopes, I'm gonna go ahead now and adjust our max fill slope. Okay, um, so our steep fill slope there, make that a three to one. You know, it'll all be based on your standard. Right now, so right now these values are just for the video. Okay, and so that would be three to one. All right, and then our steep cut slope over here, I'll make that a three to one as well. And then I'll go ahead in here and add in the right daylight. Okay, and now we have both our daylights in. And then after the fact, I can come in and adjust the left daylight. Okay, so to adjust the left daylight, I just go ahead and click on the left daylight there look at its properties and then just go down in the properties menu here I'm going to scroll down here and then I can change the cut slope to 3 to 1 as well as go down and change the fill slope to be 3 to 1 as well okay so after the fact I can go ahead in there and adjust those properties as well the one thing you want to keep in mind on this super elevation assembly is that we need to look at the actual assembly there 
can go to assembly properties right. and then when we look at construction here on the line super elevation AOR and on both sides of that assembly we want to make sure that when we look at the properties and we go to use super elevation that this needs to say um, lane outside okay so we'll do left lane outside and right lane outside so for the right we'll have right lane outside and then for the left lane okay we'll go down and make sure that reads left lane outside and apply that okay. if those values aren't there that assembly is not actually going to behave as a super elevated assembly so we want to make sure that that option is selected so by selecting the left lane outside and the right lane outside that assures us that no matter what type of curve we have whether it's a left hand curve or a right hand curve all right for this one we're headed into the site okay so we're going to kind of have a left hand curve there all right so no matter which curve we have all right whether it's in this direction or if it swings back in the other direction that super elevation will apply to either one of them using that assembly. So as a little bit of review, now that we have our assembly, in order to make a corridor, a couple things we need. We need an assembly, which we just created for super elevation. We'll need our profile for the road. That's our vertical change in the road. And then we'll also need an alignment. So we'll need an alignment for our road. So for this case, we're going to have this driveway. This particular curve is going to have super elevation in it. So since we have our three items, our assembly, our profile, and our alignment, we can go ahead now and create a corridor. Okay, so we just go to corridor here. All right, start our new corridor. Okay, we'll give it a name. We we'll just call it driveway. Okay, this will probably be residential road for you guys, something like that. All right, we'll pick our alignments. So we'll have our proposed drive as our alignment. And then our profile will be our driveway. And then our assembly now will be super elevation. Okay. Our target surface will be what we want to tie into back to existing. So that's going to be the existing surface. All right, and this time we'll go ahead and have that box checked to set our baseline and region parameters. I'll hit OK, and then this window comes up. So what I want to do now is just go ahead and set our frequencies. That's usually what I adjust in this window. Depending on the size of our curve, we may need a little more sampling in the actual curve. So I'll go into the curve increment and I'll change that. I can make it five or 10, something like that, depending on my curve size on site. And then I'll go ahead and hit okay. I'll go ahead and hit okay again. I'll go ahead and tell it to rebuild corridor. All right. And then what I'll do is go ahead and produce my corridor for me. Okay. And you'll see the items here road, shoulder, sort of that ditch line, tying back into existing outside of this corridor. So now I can go ahead and create a corridor surface. So I'll just go and click on the corridor. Okay, and then I'll go up to corridor surfaces. All right, here's my surface. So I have to go ahead and add in a new corridor surface. So I have my surface started in here. I'll go ahead and give it a style. Proposed surface. All right, and then I have to tell the which portion of the surface I want to look at. So we're going to go to our links and select the top to select the top of the pavement as our sampling surface. Now the top's been added in, it'll look at the top of that surface. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild my corridor. Hit OK here. And now my surface is in there. All right, you can see that super elevation is represented here in the curve there. Okay, you can see where it kind of starts. Alright, goes into super elevation, and then you can see it transitioning back to that pitched row there in the tangent. So it's really not a hard process. All you have to do is make sure you have that super elevated assembly. OK, 
okay, with its associated shoulder and ditches or sidewalks, whatever you have involved, okay. And then you'll have your profile in your alignment, just like you normally would for a corridor. And then you'll create yourself a corridor and an associated corridor surface for that road, showing that super elevation. Well, that's what I have for you guys today. So thank you guys so much for watching.